Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar, Exact to What You Need to Know as a Packaging Converter. Presenting today is Mark Gunlock, a Solution Architect at x -Rite. I'm Robert Grotans, the Global Digital Learning Manager, and I'll be moderating today's webinar. I just want to go over a couple of things before we get started. Due to the number of people that are attending today's webinar, we will keep everyone muted. If you have any questions during the presentation, please use the questions function on the GoToWebinar panel, and we will have some time at the very end to answer a few of your questions. Finally, this webinar will be recorded, and, you will, and we will follow up with an email after this webinar with a link to the recording so that you can watch it again. So with that, I will turn it over to Mark to get things started. Excellent. Thanks, Robert. So yeah, let's talk about the Exact 2 and what you need to know as a packaging converter. So this is our newest uh, flagship instrument for measuring in the printing and uh, converting space, the Exact 2. It's the evolution uh, from our previous generation instruments, but it's got some pretty big changes. Now the size of it is only slightly larger it's a bit longer, as you can see in this picture, comparing the two instruments, um, but it's tapered a little more on the right side here for smaller hands. Also, uh, it doesn't require an additional scan chassis, as you see on the uh, original uh, exact here. This uh, chassis was used uh, in order to be able to, to roll the instrument over patches to read in a color bar in a scan mode. Uh, and it made it a bit wider there, and that had to be removed for various things like calibration and such. Um, I'm sorry, or charging on the tray or any things like that. But um, the uh, with the Exact 2, it's integrated. These wheels, as you can see in this picture right here, are part of the instrument, not an add-on. And they're spaced in such a way that there's a, a little over two inches between them, somewhere around two and an eighth inch or so in between these, so that for the ink room, uh, the operators can roll these over ink drawdowns without getting the ink on the wheels or on the instrument. It raises the whole instrument above that. Uh, we've also improved the lighting to a new LED light source that provides uh, better lighting for better measurements, but also provides longer life to the, uh, the illuminant. There's uh, also an easy way to switch between the standard mode and the XP mode. On the previous instruments, you needed to, uh, the instrument was, was uh, either an XP or a non-XP unit. Um, and if you needed to change it, it had to be sent to the factory for such a conversion. On the new instrument, the, uh, there's a, a filter, you can see in the lower left corner here, that can be, uh, removed and replaced here. Um, one is for XP uh, functionality and one's for non-XP functionality. There is also, as you can see in the middle here, um, a integrated media flattener, which is um, intended to hold down very thin films that may uh, buckle and uh, wrinkle while measuring. This will actually hold them down and you can just reach in there with your finger and pull that out and it'll center that right below the measuring aperture that's up here. Now, um, with that, we're minimizing the amount of contact we, can, we have is just that. For most measurements of uh, more rigid stocks, papers, boards, in fact, most films that uh, uh, aren't very thin, you don't need this, and you uh, have a completely contact-free measurement uh, situation here. Nothing is touching the ink as it's coming off the press in that case. We've also improved the uh, the viewing screen on here. Um, it's larger, it's a higher res, and as you can see here, you can tilt this. Now that does a number of things. We can put more information on the screen. The higher resolution means we can put uh, finer graphics on here. And the tilting is really nice, especially when working with large packaging materials, boards, sheets, corrugated, where you have to reach far into the sheet to take measurements. Um, 
you can tip the screen up so you can see it while it's flat on the surface for measurements. And you don't have to take a measurement and then tip the instrument up to see what it measured. You leave the instrument in place um, and you can use the targeting and the display uh, without lifting the instrument at all. And you just keep moving across taking measurements. Uh, it definitely speeds some things up for uh, taking measurements and being able to see the results. The wireless capability uh, is even better now. So we've moved to um, a Wi-Fi connectivity now uh, instead of Bluetooth. Bluetooth uh, works well uh, when there's not interference like uh, large electrical motors and things like this, and that interferes with anything that's Bluetooth. Um, Wi-Fi, uh, as long as you've got uh, your network set up with uh, good strong Wi-Fi signal and your IT department works with you, you can add these instruments to your network um, which allows for uh, much more stable uh, connectivity. The charging station you see here uh, is a uh, contact. Uh, it doesn't require to be plugged in. There's, a, there's no metal contacts between the instrument and the station here. Um, but this little circle right here does the charging. And the uh, for calibration purposes, at this end here, there is a little switch here and a shutter so that when you set the instrument onto the, uh, the tray, it opens up the shutter to expose the calibration tile. And a uh, kind of cool thing here is that the instrument will measure, or I'm sorry, it'll read the uh, QR code prior to measuring the uh, calibration tile. The QR code tells the instrument what that calibration tile should measure. And so what that does, it actually allows you to calibrate your instrument on any charging tray that's in your shop. So if you, uh, let's say you're a quality manager and you're walking around the shop and uh, you realize you need to do a calibration, uh, you can you can go to any station that has the, uh, the, the charging tray, set your instrument on it and initiate the calibration and it'll use the, the calibration information encoded in the QR code to do that calibration with the white tile that's here. So it gives you a lot more flexibility. Uh, also the, uh, on the instrument, as you maybe will see in the picture here at the end here, we've upgraded to the new USB-C connectivity. That will, if you're choosing to use USB connectivity, that'll tra also charge the instrument. So you can either charge it directly with uh, the tray or through the USB cable. With all this, we've also uh, improved the speed and performance of the instrument. It is much faster to take uh, your, your measurements. And let me show you why that is. So for one thing, targeting is crazy fast. Um, I've, I've worked with a lot of customers who have been using this and uh, we've compared their ability to measure with the previous instrument and competitors instruments and then looking at this one and how quickly they can get on target and measure it. Imagine this, uh, this, this arrangement of uh, color patches we have to measure. Uh, on our previous instrument, you would have to open, you know, raise the instrument, place the uh, aperture window uh, on the patch you need to measure, and then lower it and take a measurement, and then repeat that, lift it up, move it to another patch, lower it and take a measurement. With our competitors, you put the instrument over the patch, you kind of cover it up and hope you got the right uh, area covered, and then you take the measurement. In this case, you're looking through the screen of the instrument, and you can see exactly what you're gonna measure. The uh, circle here represents the exact area that you will measure, okay? So uh, for an operator to measure something like this very quickly, um, they merely have to place it on uh, their first patch, take the measurement, roll to the next one, click the button to take the measurement, roll to the next one, take the measurement, move to the next row and so on. And it's much quicker than any other instrument in finding your target and knowing that you hit the exact area that you need to. Our scanning capability to measure in a strip is greatly improved as well. Um, again, on our previous instruments, uh, we had to line up uh, the, the chassis with the bar 
and then we would lower the instrument on it and then hit the button and move across, take the measurements. That first initial part of lining things up was a little bit slower. Um, this is so much faster here. We can, uh, we're going to take a measurement. Uh, our measurement will be where this dot is and these lines represent uh, the direction uh, that you're going to roll the instrument over your patches. So once you get that lined up there, uh, you click a brake release to allow it to roll. You click a button to initiate the measurement and just roll across those patches, and it'll it'll capture all that data very rapidly um, and very easy. You'll see uh, that you're right on the patches as you're measuring. There's no doubt that you maybe rolled off to the side or something. Uh, it's it provides a lot more confidence in those measurements. Brand new to our uh, instrument and nobody else has this, is the digital loop. This, uh, well, there's a little camera icon up here that uh, in here when I click on that, it brings up the, uh, the loop mode. And this allows me to use our camera to capture an image that I can then save and, and use for reports or anything like that. So I've got an example here of some print defects on this job and I wanna record those maybe for my quality meeting to figure out what, what we can do for corrective actions long-term on these things or whatever, I can collect that. Um, we saw a lot of people uh, out there pulling out their, their cell phones or digital cameras and trying to take pictures of these things. Um, and you always end up with shadows and glare and all kinds of stuff. Well, by using our camera in here, we're getting a much better uh, studio environment to capture these uh, images. Um, and, and save save those away for future use. When you take the uh, image, you can, within the device while you're looking at it, uh, defaults to a 1x zoom, but then you can click on the, the zoom factors here to zoom in to see uh, greater detail. Okay, so I can see just where those defects are, what's going on, and really um, be able to, to uh, diagnose the problem. And then with the uh, included software called Exact2 Suite, I can manage those images. I can take the ones that I want to use. I can then save those away, email them to, to other people or post them with other reports or whatnot. This is uh, the actual image that I captured showing the defects that I was concerned about with this print. I've got a number of items here that are very well illustrated like the, the lamination issue and impression and so on that uh, I need to you know, address. And uh, so it's all captured very well here. I could not do this with my cell phone. The other thing that we've done with the instrument is integrate it better with the software. So uh, in our color cert software, uh, which is used widely for measuring press production, and reporting back to brand owners the uh, the quality of the production we're doing. Well, with that software, um, at the end of every uh, measurement of every uh, sample that I collect, I get scores. Well, those are in the software, and traditionally the operator would have to go look at the software and see, do I have a passing score? Can I continue working on this, or do I have to fix some things? Well, now with the Exact 2, everything that's displayed in the software, as you see on the left, is also displayed on the instrument on the right you see here. So if I take my measurement and I see that everything's in the green, which means it's all passing, it's looking good, I merely continue to take measurements. I'll save that roll, save that sample, and continue taking measurements and producing. If I see things here that are failing, or I've got a failing score, only then do I actually have to go over to the computer console and then use the, the graphic uh, feedback that the software provides to help guide me into my corrective actions. Um, but if I'm passing, I don't even need to go to the uh, console. I can just continue to take measurements and control everything directly from the software. We also have uh, improved Net Profiler. Um, so some of you may be aware of Net Profiler is our calibration tool to bring a fleet of instruments all to a tighter match to one another and bring them to a tighter match to a master instrument so that my instruments will match anybody's instruments that have been net profiled. 
uh, particularly important when uh, I'm, say, a brand owner and I want to make sure that I'm measuring things the same way that my suppliers are. If we're all net profiled, their instruments and my instruments are all much tighter alignment to each other. Okay. Um, this is also part of the package for the uh, Exact 2. This is included. Uh, previously, this was an extra add on. The, um, the Net Profiler card uh, is changed up a little bit. The patches are put in a different orientation. Um, but most important is that the calibration time is just about half as long as it was previously. The, um, the uh, uh, modes that we're calibrating, uh, M0, 1, 2, and 3, on the previous instrument, the M1 had to be calibrated separately. Um, on this instrument, they're all calibrated at the same time. So it's one set of measurements to through all these patches, not two, so uh, much faster that way. And again, like I mentioned earlier, the targeting of each of these patches is going to be much quicker too. Uh, you'll be able to just place the instrument uh, over the patch, measure it, and roll to the next one, and so on, rather than lifting the instrument up, lowering it, uh, aligning it properly, and so on. It's much quicker. Also new is the uh, fleet management uh, capability here. This also comes with your exact two instruments. So this provides you, um, it's, it's super helpful for a fleet of instruments uh, across uh, an organization at, at one site or multiple sites. It allows you to view the status of your warranty, your current uh, certification, net profiler status, the firmware status. That's all you can see right down here. These little icons here show me those things, okay? Uh, warranty, certification, net profiler, and firmware. And the uh, green light means it's all current and good to go. Red lights uh, mean that uh, it's out of, uh, it's expired. And then the uh, amber here means that it, uh, it, it may be in the process or scheduled for an update. The, in fact, in the software, I can trigger uh, to update firmware on instruments. I see they're out of date. Within the software, I can go in here and, and force it to push the firmware down to the instrument, and it'll be ready when the operator is ready to uh, trigger that update on the instrument. They can uh, basically click the OK, and it'll, it'll apply that firmware update. It will not interrupt their production. Uh, they can also, uh, you can manage your service. You can uh, check out your warranty expiration dates, and you can even uh, trigger a uh, service request directly through this interface by looking at that instrument if it needs to go in for service uh, you'll be able to click a button and it'll 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 partially fill out your RMA request and you just have to add a couple more details but it'll already collect the serial number and all that and put it in there for you so it's it's a lot easier to submit those requests So the, uh, the firmware, what the operator is going to see is when you do a send a device to the firmware, the operator will see this message come up and they'll have the option to uh, allow it to do the update right now or later uh, so it's not interrupting production. The net profiler uh, visibility on link is that you'll be able to see its status, but the other thing that's really cool for people to see is just how much tighter things got on your instrument. Here's an example of a real instrument. This is my instrument, in fact, that uh, in the unprofiled mode, here's these were the deltas from the targets, and then in the profiled mode, it moved the deltas even you know, much smaller, tighter match, okay? So it was acceptable uh, in its unprofiled state, but it got much better in its profiled state. And if I looked across my fleet, I would find that most of my instruments would get down to a much tighter match like this. I can also export this report if I need to, uh, you know, prove this to another, uh, you know, manager or send off to a, a supplier or that kind of thing to make sure we're looking at the same thing. With the Exact Two Suite, um, also that's where you can maintain like a. Uh, this is uh, so the link you can manage the firmware, but the exact two suite is local software that you'll run on your systems where you can also trigger the firmware updates. Uh, you can pull an event log. So if you're talking to uh, support and you're trying to figure out why something's not behaving properly or expected, 
you can pull up your event log and send that. And uh, in the rare case that things just aren't working right, you can do a full factory reset to bring everything back to the original settings and then go back and set things the way you'd like. The other beautiful thing though about this is this uh, feature called the device screen view. This is really good for uh, remote troubleshooting in the case like if you're working with uh, your x rite support technician, um, you can bring up this view to show them what you're seeing on the instrument. But uh, actually a really great practical use for this as well is if you're training uh, your users within your team, uh, you can work in a conference room, you can project this screen that shows me exactly what's on my instrument, uh, you know, up on the wall or up on the, you know, your, your, your television display in your conference room. So everybody can see how you're operating the instrument. So you don't have everybody kind of gathered around a single instrument trying to figure things out. You can show it very easily this way. It's a great way to project that. The uh, Wi-Fi configuration uh, is also fairly easy here. The, uh, what you'll need to do is when you set up the uh, instrument on uh, any of one of your workstations, you'll launch your Exact2 Suite software plug in the USB cable, and it will um, pull from the instrument the IP address and the name of the instrument and everything, and it'll cache that away on your computer. And um, then when you go to launch any x or partner software that supports the Exact2, uh, the list of instruments will just show up in the software, and you can select which one, uh, either by the serial number or by the name, which one you're using. So while you have several of these on the network, you can select the exact one you're using at that workstation uh, from the list. So this makes it really easy to move instruments around uh, and configure all your software to, um, to communicate with those instruments. So that's what I have for the exact two. Uh, I'd like to open it up for questions at this point. Great, thank you, Mark. So if you have any questions, feel free to submit those now. While we wait for questions to come in, I am going to launch a polling question. If you'd like to get more information or speak to someone about the exact two, feel free to answer this question and we will see if any of your questions come in. I do see one question right here. What file format are the digital loop images? The images are in a PNG format, so they can be opened on any any computer and any pretty much any graphics application or uh, file preview application. Um, and they're 1600 by 1600 uh, pixels, so they're pretty decent resolution. So uh, as you saw on the slide here, you can see uh, really fine details pretty well. Okay, I see another one here. What M modes are supported and how easy is it to switch between M modes? Excellent question. The, um, so all of the, uh, the M modes are supported here, M0, 1, 2, and 3 um, for the, the, the uh, exact two standard instrument. Um, there is no need to switch. We actually capture all modes in, in a single measurement. On the XP, because the um, we had to change the uh, filter um, for the XP to uh, to to deal with the uh, issue of measuring um, film materials, extruded films, we uh, remove the filter that's required for polarization. So therefore, the M3 mode is not available on the XP, but the other modes are. Can existing net profiler cards be used to profile the exact two, or do you need a new card? You'll need the new card, and when you get your instrument, it'll come with a new card for that subscription. Is the exact two available in an XP version? Yes. Thanks for asking that. I should have been more clear about that. So it's actually three versions of it. There uh, is the regular Exact2, there is the XP version, 
And then uh, there is the exact two plus, which actually provides both filters to switch back and forth. And to be clear, because I wasn't very clear earlier, the the uh, the regular exact two um, comes with the non XP filter. The XP, of course, comes with the XP filter, and the exact two plus comes with both. But if you have uh, the XP or the non XP unit, and you choose to want to change it, that is a field serviceable or you know field change you can make. You can order the other filter and switch it out. But the plus comes with both. Related to that question, how can I tell if I need the XP version? Excellent question. So what we found a long time ago with the original uh, XP, original uh, Exact rather, was that um, we were finding that some users, particularly with uh, extruded films, were finding inconsistency of their measurements. You'd move the instrument in a small amount and you would see uh, a fairly big change in the measurement. And what we found was it was an interference between the uh, polarization filter and the tiny little lines that are um, in the extruded material. And the way you can test that is if you take a measurement with your instrument, and this, this, this test is for any instrument, okay? So if you're using ours or competitors or whatever, if you take a measurement uh, and very carefully move the instrument about say 30 degrees and take another measurement and move it another 30 degrees, take a measurement and so on, uh, in fact, when, when you do a test, it's a really good idea to mark the area you're going to measure to make sure you're putting that instrument exactly in the same spot, okay? Because we don't want to get the difference of the movement of the instrument on the actual material. You want to get only the difference of changing the rotation of the instrument, okay? When you do that, if you see significant differences of, say, you know, over 0.4 uh, delta E, uh, sometimes you can see some stuff as high as, you know, two delta E, uh, but you'll see fairly large difference there. Um, then you you may have an issue there that's related to that extruded film uh, interfering with the polarization. Now, keep in mind that, you know, uh, repeated measurements there are below 0.25-ish, you know, or probably just, uh, you know, there's a normal, but when you get up, you know, much higher than that, uh, that that may be an issue. Uh, so and again, extruded films is primarily the concern there. Um, so, um, and you also, on the instrument, by the way, when you do that test, you'd want to set your instrument to use uh, Delta E76 for that comparison, not Delta E2000, because uh, we want to look for that, um, that, that, that level, um, that using that method to uh, do that mathematical difference. I will take one more question. What Pantone libraries are available with the Exact 2? Okay, cool. So it comes with what we call the master libraries, and those represent what's in the printed books that you get from Pantone. So you've got your coded and uncoded. Uh, you've got your pastels and neons. Um, now, the other uh, libraries that are available through subscription are Pantone Live libraries, and um, you can connect through the instrument or through the Exact Two Suite software to load those uh, libraries directly into your instrument um, if you have a Pantone Live subscription. Perfect. That was the last question we have time for, so that will mark the end of our webinar. We will follow up with you if we didn't get a chance to get to your question. Again, you will receive an email with a link to this recording as well so that you can watch it again. With that, I'd like to thank everyone for joining and have a great rest of your day. Thank you.